Let's say you have a damaged area that's in the middle of a board. You know, maybe it was because someone dropped the screw gun, but now let's say the material's not there. Let's say when they dropped it on there that um, something became missing. You know, a piece of the material was missing. Over here we did it, but the material still had everything there. Now let's say there's nothing there now, and you don't want to take the whole board out, or you don't want to spend all that time out in the yard replacing the entire floor. That's why you'll find this so clever. The requirement here is to have the identical board now. I did it with just any board here, or any sample before. But here it's required that I try to find the identical board. And also it's better to get that identical board off the same side of the roll. So shade, texture, and gauge is also very close. So you'll size this up. You will simply line it up. I'll, I'll cut the corners off so I can see it in all four directions. I'll, I'll reduce the size so I can narrow down the location of this damaged area. And I have found that it's easier if I make it a little bit bigger. That way I can actually put my repair piece over the top and I can feel it. So I'll size this up. I will line it up and then I'll kind of look at it to see where it's at. And if I feel it, then I know where it's at and I will identify that location with a real small piece of tape. Actually the same size, if I can, of what the damage spot is. And that's pretty clever because my objective would be to not cut anything too big, but find the spot and put your piece of tape directly over that spot and make sure this is all lined up and again we're going to tape it down. We have found that if we cut a small diamond, not a diamond, but a, a, a triangle, like an arrowhead, you only want three sides rather than four. It's easier to hide three sides rather than four. So I'll secure this. And I found it much easier to tape around the piece that I'm cutting, but I'll make it in, in an obscure location. I won't have it pointing in one subtle direction. I'll, I'll point that arrow, if you will, in a different location. And I have also found that it's much easier to see where I'm cutting if I go ahead and put the tape down and cut through the tape. So lay this down in the general location where it needs to go and then I'll get a smaller frame and square and we are actually five minutes or less from being done today so I want to remind everyone here again today that on behalf of LaSalle Bristol and Congolium on behalf of Clayton we really appreciate your time today Again, you want a sharp knife, enough pressure to cut through both wear layers. And we're using a diamond or a, a triangle rather than a diamond. So you have three sides, just large enough to cut out the damaged area. Now this is really nice and you are really going to be impressed with results. So I will remove my scrap pieces. I generally turn them over and use that as a pallet to work on and I'll lay my piece that I'm going to need on top of that white background so my helper when we're cleaning up does not accidentally throw it away. I hate when that happens. Then I just got to start over. Only got to make a little big, bigger arrowhead that time. Not having any fun then Don. So remove the tape, position it over here so you can find it, pull this piece out, and again, you want to retain this because if it's the customer that's damaged the floor, you're going to bring this back to the plant and attach it to the invoice when you send them the bill. Now you'll use 
the bond and seal in the factory pack container that was traveling around. I'd like to show it. Maybe we can just take a subtle close-up picture of it later. But now we have this experimental container. We were determining how to package it, and it was decided that we wouldn't want to squeeze it out of a cartridge like this. So I'm using this just because I wanted to use it up. So you'll ladle some out like this on a piece of scrap. Get yourself a tongue depressor or a putty knife or a screwdriver or a piece of material or your finger or anything that you want to grab this material and put it underneath that vinyl. And this is just going to be just like this. Nothing fancy. You want to have an adequate amount underneath the vinyl and you want it to squeeze up through. It'll come up white and it will dry clear. And quite honestly, I don't think there's a thing that's too much. We like to sell it, see? The more the better. You only need enough to do the job, but you really do want to see that it squeezes up when you actually roll this and depress it. I want to see, when I press down on this, I want to see bond and seal come out from underneath all the way around or I feel like I don't have enough bond and seal. And I do. I have an adequate amount. And then I will take a scrap piece and remove a little bit off the surface, but I want to make sure it's on my underlayment. You want to cup this. I really do want to make sure that I get it all the way inside the seam edges, so cup it insert the thing, the repair section, and then make sure that you squeeze up through and get the bond and seal. And as it implies, it's bond and seal. And you don't have to be afraid to get a little dab on your fingers because it's water soluble while it's wet. And um, you just want to take a damp cloth get a little off the surface and take your steel seam roller and really manipulate this. You're going to spread that adhesive underneath there, really disperse it. That's why the steel seam roller is a very fundamental tool here. This is always going, is going to be available at LaSalle for $21.80. You can't beat that deal. And every one of these items, you can pick up most of these things from, a, from, a, from the hardware store. But we have found that this seam roller is the hardest thing to find. So LaSalle Bristol is going to provide this to the industry for $21.80. You can buy a six pack of them, put one on a service truck, one on every truck, a six pack of them. They're so economical. <laughs> You'll wipe this clean, you'll remove the adhesive or the bond and seal off your brand new seam roller that you just paid $21.80 for. You'll clean the immediate area with your terry cloth towel and yes, a t-shirt works if that's all you got, but make it damp. Do not use a paper towel. Don't go in the bathroom and get the C-fold towels and expect this to work. Use a terry cloth towel and wipe that wet and then take a dry one and chamois it off dry and it's out of here. Let's move this thing to the next station. We got work to do today.